Victor Lopez in left field, batting second. Mickey Mantle in center field, batting third. Hitting in the cleanup spot, playing right field, Roger Maris also back in action. Yogi Berra doing the catching tonight, hitting fifth. Ted Hadley is playing in place of Bill Scar, and the Moose says that his left wrist, which was injured in Detroit, is feeling a little weak, and that he will be available for pinch hitting duty. So Hadley is the first baseman, batting sixth. Cletus Boyle has been moved back to third base, batting in the seventh position. McDougal getting a rest. Bobby Richardson batting eighth, playing second base. And Ralph Terry pitching and batting ninth. For the Senators, Pete Wisenhan leading off in center field. Reno Batoya at third, batting second. Bob Allison in right field, hitting third. Jim Lemon in the cleanup spot, playing left field. Armin Killebrew at first base, batting fifth. Billy Gardner at second base, hitting sixth. Earl Batty batting seventh, doing the catching. Jose Valdivioso as shortstop batting eighth and Pedro Ramos pitching and batting ninth. Kubek stepping in is batting 285, has 16 doubles, three triples, eight homers, 34 runs batted in, and here's the first pitch of the ball game. Strike call by Pedro Ramos. Ramos has won four and lost nine this year. He's 0-1 against the Yankees, and his lifetime mark against New York, six wins, 13 defeats. Reno Batoya playing way in at third. Wisenhant in center field is shading Kubek over to left center. The pitch is high ball 1-1-1. One, one, one. Ramos, even though he's lost nine games, has a 3.63 earned run average. is Hector Lopez. Here's the wind-up by Ramos. The 1-1 one, one pitch. High ball two. Two and one. Ramos, born in Cuba, still lives there. Six feet tall, 175 pounds. Here's the 2-1 pitch. It's fouled back on the screen. Strike two, two and two. Over the past four years, Ramos has worked more innings and won more games than any other pitcher on the Senators. That's a total of 51. And counting four this year gives him 55. Pedro is an avid Western fan, and in the uh, winter in Cuba, he goes on television shows and does a Western show. There's a line drive base hit to center field. With man up on the ball on one hop, and Kubek leads off the ball game with a line single to center. Boy, he hit that ball right on the button. And here's Hector Lopez. And here's a boy that's really been doing a job. Lopez batting 322. As a matter of fact, he is the leading Yankee regular in batting average. He stepped ahead of Roger Maris, who's batting 321. Hector has five doubles, three triples, four homers, and 17 runs batted in. And Hector has reached the base 13 times in his last 18 appearances. Armin Killebrew at first base holding Kubek on. There's nobody out here in the top of the first. No score. A stretch by Ramos. The pitch is over. Strike one call. Ramos actually leans just a little bit before he's ready to pitch. If the runner on first notices it, he can get a little better jump than uh, he usually would. A little better chance to steal a base. Pitchers get into certain habits. You know, they don't realize they're doing them. The opposing teams do. Here's the stretch. The pitch is bonded down to first base line. Killebrew is up with it. And tags Lopez for the out. No chance to get Kubek sliding in a second. The sacrifice works. He bonded the ball hard and... Killebrew had a charge in, pick it up, took a quick look at second, but then saw he couldn't make the play. One out, here's Mickey Mantle. Mickey's batting 273, eight doubles, four triples, 20 homers, and 44 runs batted in. Roger Maris. Ramos checks the sign from Batty. Outfield playing way real deep. 
And left center and right. The pitch to Mickey is swung and a missed strike one. Mickey had a real good cut at the low fastball. Bending over to get the sign. Now the stretch. The pitch is up in the air, but coming foul and out of play right over our heads. Nothing in two. Hank Sawyer yelled, look out as the ball rolled off the roof of the upper deck and landed just in front of the Yankee dugout. deep in the box batting left-handed as he does right-handed. Does not have a wide stance at the plate either. Here's the stretch. Pitch is fouled back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Beautiful night for a ball game. It was certainly a lovely day today. out halfway to the mound to talk things over. And in the last few contests that Ramos has pitched, the opposing managers and players have accused him of throwing a spitter. This is a pretty rough accusation. Ramos is always going to his mouth and with that big wad of tobacco in there. And the players figure that he's doctoring the ball up a little bit, but then he wipes his fingers on his shirt. The umpires have examined the ball and... Of course, Pedro has not been caught throwing a spitter. Whether he does or not, I don't know. He wouldn't admit it even if he did, but that's a very serious offense to be caught throwing a spitball. But it's a psychological advantage for a pitcher to have the batter think he's throwing. When Lou Burdett has had that advantage for a long, long time over in the National League. One ball, two strikes on Mickey. One out, two back at second. Top of the first, no score. The pitch is far back on the screen. Nick has had some real good cuts at this fastball that Ramos has thrown, but has not been able to get a solid piece of it. Ramos yelling in the batting. Pedro is quite a card out there on the mound. He's a pretty good actor. Mantle walks out of the box. The plate umpire is John Flaherty at first base, Ed Hurley. Umpiring at second, Bob Stewart. And over third, Hank Saw. Here's the stretch. The pitch, high inside, two and two. Jim Lemon in left, Pete Wisenant in center, and Bob Allison in right. For Washington, Reno Batoya at third, Jose Valdivielto at short, Billy Gardner at second, Harmon Killebrew at first. Earl Batty doing the catching, and Pedro Ramos out on the mound. Ramos again wants to talk with Earl Batty. between Ramos and Mantle. Get the batter thinking up there and could get him in trouble. Two and two on Mickey. The stretch by Ramos. The pitch is top foul back out of play again. Ramos is throwing that fastball between Mantle's belt and his knees. He's not getting it up high. Here's the stretch. The pitch high that time and outside. Three and two on Pedro. And Cressetti says, take a look at that ball. And there was one of those times when... 
Brissetti and some of the Yan other Yankees thought that he might have thrown a spitter. Mantle with a big grin on his face looking out towards Pedro. The ball did do a few tricks on the way to the plate. Full count on Mickey. Here's the stretch. The payoff pitch is hit on the ground at first base. Killer grows up with a top of it, picks it up, steps on the bag. Kubek moves to third. And Mantle is out on the unassisted put out by Killebrew, two away. And here's Roger Maris. Maris, batting 321, has 16 doubles, 3 triples, 25 homers, and 64 runs batted in. Frank Rossetti coaching at third is keeping an eagle eye on Ramos on every pitch. Ralph Howe coaching over at first. Two out, Kubek at third. The pitch to Maris. High outside, ball one. Boy, the crow won't take his eyes off, Pedro. <clears throat> now Frankie bends down with his hands on his knees, looking right at Ramos. And Ramos goes to his lips and wipes it off on his shirt. The stretch. The curve is hit deep to right if it doesn't go foul. And it's... Wait a minute, what is that? What's that signal? That's a home run for Mary. Ed Hurley gave an unusual sign. He just pointed straight ahead and over the fence. And Roger Maris hits a home run. Usually the umpire will signal towards the fair side of the field if it's a home run and wave his arm around. But Ed Hurley just went over, 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 and Maris hesitated at first base. And then continued, and Maris gets his 26th home of the year. RBI's number 65 and 66, and the Yankees lead 2 0 here in the top of the first. A tremendous home run. There's no doubt that it was out of the ballpark. It was just a question of whether it would curve fair or foul. So here is Yogi Berra. The pitch to Yogi is low inside ball one. Barra batting 293, two doubles, a triple, seven home, and 28 runs batted in. So it looks like the rest Maris had, at least for one day, gave him a little extra strength. He really creamed that one. Yogi takes the pitch on the outside corner. Strike one, one, one. And I'll tell you, when Maris hits them, there's no question that they're far enough. Boy, he has hit some tremendous home runs this year. The pitch is hopped in the air to short center field. Wisman digging in, coming way in, loses his cap, under it now, makes the catch, but he lost his cap about 20 feet back. So for the Yankees in the top of the first, two runs on two base hits. No standard errors, nobody left to score at the end of one half inning of play, the Yankees two, and the Senators coming to bat. Ever stop to think about the little things that add up to having a good day? Things like a bright sunny morning, hot coffee, toast, done the way you like it. And when you hop in your car and you want the engine to start right up, to idle smoothly to give good performance while you're on the go. Many times it's the little things that keep an engine running at its best, like a clean carburetor. Today's Atlantic Imperial gasoline is especially designed to clean your carburetor as you drive and keep it clean. A clean carburetor means smoother performance and greater gasoline economy. Make every day a good day. Start off with Atlantic Imperial gasoline keep your car on the go. Well, Roger Maris, who has been the big story of the season for the Yankees, writes another chapter as he delivers a two-run homer in the bottom of the, in the top of the first inning to set the Yankees off to a two-to-nothing lead. For the New York Yankees will be Ralph Perry. Perry has won four and lost three this year. No decisions against the Senators this year. And his lifetime record against Washington, four wins, six defeats. Perry started against Washington on May the 30th, but was not involved in the final decision. Pitched seven innings, allowed two runs. And Perry has had first inning trouble in his last two games and quite a few before that. What service I'm getting tonight. Someone just lit my Winston cigarette for me. Five, 
for the Senators leading off. Pete Wisenhan batting 273, five doubles, one home and four runs batted in. He's standing deep in the box. Perry Fitch is right in there, strike one called. Ellis Clary coaching at third, and Sam Milley over at first. Here's the wind-up by Terry. His pitch is bunted and fouled back. Leader Foy charging way in. Nothing him to the count. While Boyer was playing shortstop, he was nothing short of sensational out there. And he's done a great job at third while he's been in there, too. One of the best glove men in the big league. And starting to hit that ball. Getting more and more confidence with each passing ball game. Tony Kubek back at short tonight, playing in a hole against Whitman. The two-strike pitch is a curve of tie, ball one. Bobby Richardson at second, over near the bag. And Ted Hadley playing in place of the moose tonight, Bill Scarron, resting his injured wrist, but is available for pinch-hitting duty. And the outfield for the Yankees, Lopez in left, Madeline center, Maris in right. Bella doing the catching. Here's Terry Fitch. Outside. Ball two, two and two. Two-two pitch. Strike three called. He got the curve on the outside corner. A tough pitch, even if Wisenhan had swung at it. Broke down and away and just make the corner. One away. Reno Batoya batting 319. Three doubles, two triples, two homers, and 18 runs batted in. Just about every year, Reno starts off real well. Was way up in the 300. Take the pitch high ball one. This year he's staying up there a little longer than other years. And maybe the youngsters arrive. He has needed experience. Not over with Detroit. Didn't play too much. Strong right hand hitter. Pitch is in there. Strike one. One and one. Fastball didn't get it. On deck, Bob Allison. The one ball, two strike pitch is fouled back on the screen. and Assumption College in Windsor, Ontario. A well-learned ball player. Curve just outside. Two and two. One out, nobody on. The Yankees lead 2 nothing in the top of the first. The Yankees scored three in the top of the first yesterday. But the Senators kept bouncing back. Ended up winning a real weird game, but a big win for them. A 2-2 pitch, curve, strike three, call, and Perry has struck out the first two hitters on call third strike, both of them curve balls. Two away, here's Bob Allison. Allison batting 291, has 16 doubles, three triples, nine homers, and 39 runs batted in.
pitch is a curve low outside, ball one. Allison, six feet four and 218 pounds. And last year won the uh, Rookie of the Year honors in the American League. Quite a ball player. Fullback at the University of Kansas, and he must have been quite a fullback. There's a bump, but it's back to the mound, and Terry's up with it. Throws to first in time to get Allison by a step. And that time, had Allison brought it down the third baseline, he'd have been in there easily, but it was right back to the mound. Four to Senators in the bottom of the first, no runs, no hits, no Yankee errors, nobody left the score at the end of one full inning. The Yankees, two, and the Senators, nothing. We'll take a look at the scoreboard. And the American League, Baltimore is at Boston for a night game, Estrada against Brewer, and that's the only other American League game scheduled. And the National League, Philadelphia at Cincinnati, Pittsburgh at Milwaukee, San Francisco at Los Angeles play tonight. And the only day game, the Cardinals eked out a 3-2 win over the Cubs. McDaniel in relief the winner, Cardwell who started the loser, Ernie Banks home in the sixth with one on his 24th of the year. will play Baltimore Wednesday and Thursday nights. And then they will go to Boston for Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. We'll be on the air at 7.55 p.m. from Baltimore. Tomorrow night and Thursday night. All right, here's Ken Hadley filling in for Bill Scarron at first base. Batting 216, four homers, eight runs batted in. Hadley has eight hits this year, four of them home runs. Pedro Ramos ready to pitch to Hadley, low inside, ball one. The one nothing pitch is fouled back out of play, one one. Maris, two run home in the first inning, giving the Yankees their lead. Got that with two out. One one pitch, foul back on the screen, strike two. Here's the wind up by Pedro. The pitch is strike three call. Got the curveball on the outside corner for Ramos' first strikeout of the night. And here's Cletus Boyer. Boyer batting 221. Nine doubles, four homers, 18 runs batted in. Pitch to Boyer is right down the middle, strike one call. Ramos can fire that fastball. The one strike pitch is fouled at the plate, strike two. On deck is Bobby Richardson. Richardson and Scarron have 10 game hitting streaks going for them. The pitch, outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. The pitch, outside. Boy, I held up the swing. He started to go for it. Two and two. Another good crowd here tonight. Here's the windup. The 2-2 pitch. Low ball three. Full count on Boyle. Limos has given up 12 home run pitches this year, counting the one Maris hit today. The payoff pitch. Ground ball hit to second base. Billy Gardner to Killebrew to away. 
is Bobby Richardson. Batting uh, 250, eight doubles, one triple, one home, and 17 runs batted in. Richardson has had 25 hits in his last 70 at bats. That's a 357 pace. Pitch is low, ball one. Richardson bluffing a bunt. Latoya plays in on Richardson and close to the line. Foul to Vialto and Gardner at short and second. Come in a few steps. They know Bobby can go down that line. The one nothing pitch is a strike. Side arm curve ball, one and one. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Foul back on the screen. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. The stands are not too far back from home plate. Fans really have to be on the alert for foul balls here. They're right on the field. The one ball, two strike pitch. Overhand curve hit. Foul outside of third. Fans get on one of the special policemen situated down the left field and right field lines. Here's Ramos' pitch. He's turning the ground right back to the pitcher. Ramos backhands it over to Killebrew, and that's all for Richardson and the Yankees. In the top of the second, no runs, no hits, no Senator Harris, nobody left to score at the end of an inning and a half. The Yankees, two and the Senators, nothing. When he lubricates all of your car's important chassis and engine points, he's actually cushioning those parts for protection and smoother performance. And also important as a part of every Atlantic Safety Service lubrication, he checks such vital equipment as your lights, your cooling system, battery, and muffler. That's the safety service part of his job. To make it a point to see your Atlantic dealer soon for a safety service lubrication to keep your car on the go. KO Albany. In the bottom of the second inning, Jim Lemon, who won the most valuable player award for the month of any Senator player and was presented with some gifts before the game tonight by the Senator fans, is leading off. Big Jim having a fine year, batting 282, six doubles, 20 homers, and 47 runs batted in. He leads the Senators in homers and RBI. Big, strong right-hand hitter. When I say big, six feet, five inches tall and 200 pounds. Pitch to Lemon, high ball one. Big Jim has one of the biggest strides at home plate. He hardly takes a step. His feet are so far apart. Pitch, strike one, one of one. Last year, Lemon had his best year in the big league. Had a 279, had 33 homers and 100 runs batted in. One-one delivery is a curved strike call on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Terry has been keeping that curve in a good spot. Good, that is, as far as he's concerned, but not for the hitters. The pitch, fastball hit high in the air to left center field. Not too deep. Lopez calling for it. Under it. And makes the catch. The wind is not blowing out towards left field tonight the way it was yesterday. Balls were really jumping out of here. That brings up Armin Killebrew, who has been having a very disappointing year so far as the Senator fans are concerned. Killebrew batting 252 has nine doubles, one triple, only four homers, and 15 runs batted in. Last year, as you know, Killebrew had 42 home runs and 105 runs batted in. Swings and fouls the pitch back strike one. But Harmon has been hurt quite a bit of the year and hasn't been able to swing the bat the way he'd like to. 
Pulled the muscle in his leg, hurt his shoulder. Those things bother a ball player. Strike pitch, high inside, gets away from Yogi, rolling back to the wall. Ball one, one, one. On deck is Billy Gardner. Off there, he goes back to the rosin bag. Roger Maris way over in right center on Kellegu. Mantle way back in deep left center field. And Lopez back and left. Third low outside, ball two. Two and one. Terry into the windup. Kurt swung and a missed strike two. And he did not have a good cut at that one. You could see he was cool on the pitch, but couldn't stop his bat. Sort of a half-hearted swing. <laughs> there he's got that curved ball working for him tonight. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Fastball outside, full count on Kelebrew, 3-2. Try to understand how some days pitchers have good stuff and other days they don't. Jim Coach said he didn't have anything yesterday. That he tried to throw hard, he tried to throw curves, and he just couldn't do either. And it showed he was racked up pretty good. So he didn't lose the game. Here's the payoff pitch. Curve strike three swinging. A 3 2 curve ball that really broke. And Ralph Terry gets his third strike out of the ball game. And that'll bring up Billy Gardner. Billy having a fine year, batting 290, has 13 doubles, two triples, four homers, and 25 runs batted in. Eddie Lopat, the pitching coach, yelling words of encouragement out to Terry. Lopat keeps his eye on those pitches. The 1-1 one, one pitch is top foul down the right field line, out of play. Kicked right off the light power. One ball, two strikes. Definitely hit. Here comes Doc Lance, the trainer for Washington, out along with Ellis Clary looking at Gardner's wrist. Now here comes Crookie Lavagetto out. And this would be a tough loss for the Senators should Gardner have to retire for any length of time. He is regarded as one of the top second basemen in baseball. Billy Gardner hit by a pitch ball. Is being looked over very carefully. the trainer, making sure there are no bones broken. This is the 14th year for Doc Lentz as the Senator's trainer. And Gardner's going to hang in there. One of the old Orioles they used to call these fellas who were spiked and would stay in the ball game. Uh, 
Here's Earl Batty, the catcher, batting 240. Five doubles, one triple, nine homers, 28 runs started in. That's the first base runner of the ball game against Ralph Terry. And Gardner was hit by a pitch ball. Two out. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Low inside ball one. Yogi bluffed the throw down to first. Ken Hadley is holding first base against Billy Gardner. Here's the stretch by Terry. The curve in the dirt picked up nicely by Yogi. Ball two, two and nothing. Joe grubs up the ball before flipping it back to Terry. Yogi can still bounce around back at that plate. season with the New York Yankees. He played part of 46, only seven ball games. Two balls, one strike, two out. Yankees two, center is nothing, bottom of the second. Curve is over the outside corner. Two and two to count. Two balls, two strikes, two out. He steps out of the box. Now he's back in again. Here's a stretch by Terry. Fastball, strike three, swinging. And Terry gets his fourth strike out of the ball game for the Senators in the bottom of the second. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors. One man left on. Score at the end of two full innings. The Yankees two and the Senators nothing. Carburetor gives smoother driving performance, so use New Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. And right now, let's pause for station identification. You are tuned to 14 Sicily on radio dial, your station for music, news, and sports. WOKO, Albany, New York, 19 before 9. Look at the standings in the American League. The Yankees lead the Indians by just a game and a half. Imagine the Yankees won seven out of eight games and lost a full game to Cleveland. Cleveland won eight in a row. Baltimore three games out. Chicago six behind. Detroit ten. Washington twelve. Kansas City seventeen and a half. And the Red Sox in last place eighteen games out. The Yankees have two tough ball games coming up with Paul Richards and his young birds. Ninth for the Yankees is Ralph Perry. Perry got his first hit of the year. In the last game in which he pitched, he's one for 27, batting 037. Batting left handed. Pedro Ramos checking the sign from batting. Here's the windup. The pitch is in there, strike one call. Petoya way in at third, Ramos looking at him. Ramos keeps looking at Petoya. And Petoya moves over a little bit. The pitch, low. Ball one, one and one. The infield has shortened up on Terry. The 1-1 one, one pitch is swung at in this strike two, and Terry had a good cut at that one. Almost a full moon looking right down on it. Oh, you can sure see a face in that moon, Bobby. The pitch, strike three call. The curveball at the outside corner. Second strikeout for Ramos. That brings up the top of the batting order again. Tony Kubek, who singled in the first inning, and scored ahead of Maris's homer. 
That's the score. The Yankees lead by two to nothing. First pitch to Tony, and it goes by him and all the way back to the wall. Ball one. Just missed hitting Kubek and got by the catcher. The one nothing pitch is high ball two. Kubek was telling me today before the game that he had heard some stories about Pete Wisenhan being quite a character. And Pete used to walk up in the minor leagues with his bat in his back pocket. And he'd walk to the plate, pick up dirt, then reach over his shoulder and grab the bat and hit. There's a strike call, two balls and one strike. And Tony told me he was going to do it tonight, but I haven't seen him do it yet. It would be quite funny if that reach over your shoulder and grab your bat. The 2 1 pitch is topped in the air to short left field. Here comes Jim Lemon coming in. Under it and makes the catch. Here's Hector Lopez. Hector sacrificed in the first inning, moving Kubek down to second. Ramos into the windup. The pitch is low inside ball one. And the pitch is fouled off the shin guards of Earl Batty Rose all the way over in the Yankee dugout. Boy, that is solid. Yankee dugout situated on the third base side. The Senators over and back of first. The bullpens are out in the dead center field for the Senators and for the Yankees in back of the left field fence. Pitch, strike called. One ball, two strikes. Yankees two, Senators nothing, top of the third. The pitch, curve low, ball two, two and two. <laughs> Here's the two-two pitch. Strike three, he couldn't check his swing. He went far enough around, it was a bad pitch. That's the third strikeout for Ramos. And the Yankees go down one, two, three here in the top of the third. Nothing across the score at the end of two and a half innings. The Yankees two and the Senators nothing. Say, how much does it cost to clean a carburetor? Well, for regular users of New Atlantic Imperial gasoline, not a penny. That's because New Atlantic Imperial is especially designed to clean your carburetor as you drive. Yes, with your very first tank full, New Atlantic Imperial starts to remove the troublesome deposits that normally collect on the carburetor walls. Make it a habit to use New Atlantic Imperial gasoline in your car. Do away with stalling, rough idling, and gasoline waste caused by a dirty carburetor. That's Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Bottom of the third inning, the... Yankees on the basis of a two-run homer by Roger Maris in the first inning leading 2-0. In the bottom of the third inning, it'll be Jose Valdivioso, Pedro Ramos, and Pete Wisenhan facing Ralph Perry. Perry has had his curveball working to near perfection. He has four strikeouts. been hit to the outfield, a bunch, which Terry threw out Allison, and one player been hit by a pitch ball. Down to the Elso, batting 235, has a double, a triple, two homers, and eight runs batted in. Boyer in on the infield grass. 
the pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Terry getting set on the mound. Into the windup. Curve. One of that missed strike two. He tried to push that ball down the first base line. And he had a good pitch to bunt. A high curve ball. Nothing in two on Jose. Here's the pitch. It's high and Jose hits the dirt. Boy, and he's mad. Look at him. He is yelling out at Terry and starts after him, and Flaherty stops him. He really has to hold the back, and he pushes Flaherty. And wasn't that? And Ellis Flaherty get between Valdivioso and Ralph Terry. Boy, Jose was mad. He was ready to charge out after Terry. And as Flaherty tried to restrain him, he pushed Flaherty away. And, of course, this is one time where Flaherty will not put him out of the ball game because... Valdivioso was not mad at the plate umpire. He was trying to get at Terry. Boy, Jose hit the dirt. His helmet went one way and his bat went the other. He sure didn't like that pitch. Ed Hurley now comes in from first base. Hank Shaw from third. They're all standing around Jose. And that Latin temper erupted that time. Wow, he... Valdivioso seems to have cooled off a little bit now. Getting back in the batter's box. Boy, he pounds the plate with his bat, though. Flaherty says, wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. Let's cool off a little longer here. All right, now Jose's back in there. Let's see if Perry's got him set up for the curveball. He brushed him high and tight with that fastball. Here's the windup. The curve is high outside, ball two. He tried to throw it low and away. Couldn't get it, two and two. He only gave the Senator fans something to yell about, that's for sure. The two-two pitch. The curve, low outside, ball three. Full count on Jose. the payoff pitch. Here it is. And he strikes out. Strike three. And Jose almost fell down swing and take the last dagger look out at Terry before walking into the dugout. Boy, what a cut he had at that one. That's strikeout number five for Terry. He threw the fastball by him. And here's Pedro Ramos. Ramos batting 135. Two doubles, a homer, and one run batted in. is still pointing out to the mound and yelling at Terry. I don't know whether Terry can understand Spanish or not. All right, here's the first pitch to Ramos. It's low outside ball one. Boy, was in a third. Remember, Ramos can fly down that line. He's regarded as one of the fastest men in the big league. The one nothing pitch. Outside ball two, two nothing. down the middle, strike one call. Ramos taken all the way. The time's Pedro back left-handed, just as Ralph Terry, he switches back and forth. Swings hard, he doesn't get too many hits or too high a batting average, but he likes to hit the ball out of the park. Pitch is swung and a miss, strike two. Now 
now for the 2-2 delivery. Strike three swinging. Man, this Perry is blazing that ball tonight. That's strikeout number six. He has had two in each inning so far. And here's Pete Wisenhand, who was called out on strikes in the first inning. Yankees leading 2 nothing here in the bottom of the third. Two out and nobody on. is Reno Batoya. Terry can't read Yogi's signs. He has to see them again. Now he's got it. Serve is hit on the ground right back to the pitcher on one hop. Terry over to Hadley. And that's all for Wizenham. And the Senators here in the bottom of the third. Nothing across. The score at the end of three full innings. The Yankees two and the Senators nothing. Actually, there's not too much to report on the scoreboard as yet. All night games in the National League, one day game, the Cardinals defeated the Cubs 3-2. Danny Banks hit his 24th home of the year with a man on. And in the American League, there's only one other game being played. Baltimore at Boston is nothing, nothing at the end of one. Estrada against Brewer. Speaking of those amazing Baltimore Orioles, we told you the Yankees will play them Wednesday and Thursday nights in Baltimore. They won't be back at Yankee Stadium until mid-August, but we thought it might be the part of wisdom to order seats now for this two-game series. And Paul Richards' colorful young club returns to the stadium on Monday night, August 15th, and Tuesday afternoon, the 16th of August, and then late in September on Friday night, September 16th, Saturday afternoon, the 17th, and a big doubleheader on Sunday, September 18th. And it looks like Baltimore will be in the pennant race right down to the wire. So uh, a word to the wise, get your tickets now. Mickey Mantle, who bounced out to first base in the first inning, will lead off for New York here in the top of the fourth. The Yankees lead 2-0 on Roger Maris' two-run homer in the top of the first. His 26th homer of the year. Clyde Ramos into the windup. Pitch to Mickey. It hits him. It hit Mickey right on the hip. And Mick gives Ramos the glare. And Flaherty is charging out to Ramos saying that he hit him on purpose. John Flaherty ran out to the mound. And Cookie Lavagetto was arguing with Flaherty. Flaherty says that Ramos threw right at Mantle and hit him on purpose. And Lavagetto says, how can you tell if he's throwing at the hitter? That's actually a hard decision to make for an umpire. And Flaherty is hot. He is arguing with Lavagetto. He hit Mantle right in the right hip. Mantle made no bones about it. Threw the bat away, but glared at Ramos as he went down to first base. And now Hank Thor and Ed Hurley, along with Flaherty, are surrounding Lavagetto. And Cookie pounding his fist into his hand, saying, how can you tell if he deliberately threw at that batter? Fortunately, it wasn't thrown at Mantle's head. It hit him in the meaty part of his hip. Ramos continues to warm up while they're arguing out at the pitcher's box. So Mickey is hit by a pitch ball leading off the top of the fourth inning. And Ravagetto pushes Ramos back out of the mound as Ramos started to talk with Clarity. And the fans are getting out of Clarity. Move so fast. He really ran right out there. Actually, before the ball hit Mantle, he was running. Here's Roger Maris, who homered in the first inning to drive in the Yankees' two runs. The stretch by Ramos. The pitch is hit slowly back to the box. Ramos goes to first base. Maris is out. Mantle slides into second base. never known a pitcher to deliberately throw at a batter. It's a hard thing to tell. It really is. They try to come close sometimes to brush him back. All right, here's Yogi Bell. Yogi fly to center field in the first inning. Mantle 
hold on a second. The stretch by Ramos. The pitch is a strike call, and Yogi steps back and said that ball was a little low. Clarity said no, it wasn't. The pitch to Yogi is fouled back out of play. Strike two. Nothing in two to count. Nothing in two on Yogi. One out. Matt leading off second. It's to Yogi. is fouled right over to the center of the dugout. Costello is sure giving Ramos the eagle eye all night to see that he's not loading up a spitter. The pitch to Yogi is top to Costello. Yeah, Whitman going back. He's going to make the catch. Mantle tagging up. Mickey easily comes to third after the catch. And it's two away. Yogi was leaning away from that pitch. Still got good wood on it. Hit it to the deepest part of center field. Woodman made the catch. Mantle tagged up, went in a third. It's two out. And the battle will be Kent Hadley, who was called out on strikes in the second inning. Ramos puts up two fingers, signaling two out to his teammates. Good to let them know once in a while, even though all ball players should know it. We do have a lapse of memory occasionally. Two nothing, the Yankees lead here in the top of the fourth. Mantle at third. Here's the windup. The pitch is a strike call, and Hadley steps out of the box and argues on the pitch. Ramos is throwing kind of a sinker that's dipping down around the knees. And it's ball. Look at Hadley found that bat on the plate. There's going to be some fireworks before this night's over. The one strike pitch is strike two ball. That ball is really dipping. And look at Cresetti walking out getting a closer look at Ramos. Boy, I tell you, that ball really dipped down and away from Hadley. Nothing in two. Here's the windup. The pitch is gets away from the catcher. Here comes Mantle. He'll score. And Ramos really threw a ball that exploded. And the Yankees lead three to nothing. That's a wild pitch that completely got away from Batty. And Ramos tried to put a little extra on that pitch. It sunk. But it sunk where Batty couldn't get his glove on the ball. One ball, two strikes on Hadley. So here the Yankees have scored in the top of the fourth without the benefit of a base hit. The pitch is strike three swinging. Hadley goes down on strike for the second time. That's the fourth strikeout by Ramos. For the Yankees in the top of the fourth, one run on no base hit. No center to errors. And nobody left on base in the score at the end of three and a half innings. The Yankees three and the Senators nothing. Senor, you are an Atlantic dealer? Yes, sir, I'm an Atlantic dealer. Can I help you? I am Luis San Domingo Cordova, greatest bullfighter in all the world. But never have I known a bull to snort like this automobile. Snort, huh? What make of car is it? Taurus. Well, maybe Taurus. Maybe your car has a dirty carburetor. El carburador, senor? Yes, when a carburetor gets dirty, it can cause rough engine performance and waste gasoline. Muy malo, senor. But now we can fix that with Atlantic Imperial Gasoline. It cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Muy bueno, senor. And this Atlantic Imperial, it works fast? Fast as you can say, ole. Like to try it? See, it is trying to take the bull by the horse. Ah, the car's performance is almost as smooth as one of my own. If this were a bull, I would award Atlantic both ears and the tail. Atlantic keeps the car on the go. In the bottom of the fourth inning, it'll be Reno Victoria, Bob Allison, and Jim Lemon to face Ralph Terry. 
The Yankees lead 3 nothing, And the only man to get on against Terry so far in the ballgame was Billy Gardner, who was hit by a pitch ball. Terry goes to the rosin bag, picking around out on the rubber. Has to get his feet in a certain position, or he's not ready to pitch. Here's the first pitch to Batoya. It's lying left field. Here's the first base hit off Terry in a ball game. Lopez up with it. And Batoya's on with a line single to left. Terry got that curveball a little too high. Here's Bob Allison, who uh, was thrown out attempting to beat out a bunt in the first inning. He bunted right back to the box. Ken Hadley moved over to hold Batoya at first base. Here's the stretch. The pitch is a strike call. A fastball over the outside corner. On deck is Jim Lemon. Batoya leads off first. Terry's pitch is low outside, ball one. <laughs> Terry sets again. Fastball low outside, backhanded by Yogi. Two balls and one strike. Outfield deep and around towards left on Allison. Big, strong boy. The 2 1 pitch is a curve. Hits slowly out towards first base. Perry off the mound. Off with it. Throws to first just in time to get Allison moving to second as Batoya. That was not a punt. He hit it off the end of his bat. Here's Jim Lemon, who fly to left field in the second inning. 3 nothing. the Yankees lead. Big Jim has 20 home runs already this year. Last year had 33 homers. It's top in the big league. Lemon the battle with Killebrew on deck. Off second, the stretch and the pitch is a slight call, a fastball down the middle. Again, Terry sets. His pitch is hit high in the air to but Mantle has got the roll. He's under it. Batoya tagging. Mantle's throw comes in the third base, and Batoya holds up as Mantle goes all the way in on a fly from deep center field. Had Lemon pulled that ball, it would have been gone, but he hit it out to center field where there's a lot of room to roam. Batoya wisely didn't try to advance in second. And here's Harmon Killebrew, who struck out swinging in the second inning. Three nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Now Terry ready to pitch to Killebrew. The pitch is popped high in the air to left center field. Mantle moving under it. Boy, that's way up there. And Mickey makes the catch. Boy, that one almost went out of sight. For the Senators in the bottom of the fourth, no runs on their first hit of the ball game. No Yankee errors and one man left in the score at the end of four full innings. The Yankees three, the Senators nothing, and we pause for station identification.
1460 on the radio dial. This is Quality Modern WOKO. Fans, I'd like to mention that the second half of this game is being brought to you by the crisp, refresher Valentine beer. You know, Valentine is a light beer with two lager flavor, and that's what makes it the crisp, refresher. The study just will not take his eyes off Pedro Ramos. He watches him constantly. Quick look at the scoreboard in the American League. Baltimore has scored three runs in the top of the second. They lead the Red Sox 3-0 at the end of an inning and a half. Estrada against Brewer. That's the only other American League game. In the National League, only one game played this afternoon. The Cardinals beat the Cubs 3-2. McDaniel the winner, Cardwell the loser. Ernie Banks home in the sixth with one on his 24th of the year. The other games are just about getting ready to start. Peter Spoyer, who bounced to the second baseman, leads off for the Yankees here in the top of the fifth. He takes the fastball over the knee, strike one calls. Kurt swung and a missed strike two as Cletus went fishing a little bit that time. Tried to chase the curveball and couldn't quite reach it. Another curve, he holds up this time, ball one. Two-strike pitch is low and away and rolls back to the wall. Two and two to count. Ramos has thrown quite a few pitches that have gotten away from Batty tonight. One was a costly one in the fourth inning. Had a lot Nadler score from third. The two-two pitch. Flying the right field. Coming on is Allison. He can't get it. And he gets it on one hop and boy is on with a single short right field. The third hit on the off Ramos in the ball game, but one of the three hits was Roger Maris' 26th home of the year in the first inning. Gave the Yankees their first two runs. Brings up Bobby Richardson. Bobby hit back to the box in the second inning, has a 10 game hitting streak going. Killebrew holding first against Boyer. Latoya is in at third. With nobody out. And looking for the possible sacrifice. Ramos steps off the mound. Now he's back on. Hiding the ball in back of his right leg. Here's a stretch. The pitch is a curve inside ball one. Bobby had squared around as Dota Bunt was just checking to see what the infield was going to do. And Batoya came charging in and Ramos broke over towards third base. Look down at Cressetti. See if they might have a hit and run on or something. A stretch. There goes Batoya. The ball is hit. Out to the shortstop. And he's going to have to hustle. The throw to first. Just in time to get Richardson. But Boyer moves down to second base. I'm getting Boyer and Batoya mixed up here. But Batoya to third base. And Boyer went into second. Richardson bounces out to the shortstop. As they have the hit and run on but it puts the Yankee runner in scoring position. And it brings up Ralph Terry. Terry swung the bat right-handed, then left-handed. I guess he doesn't know exactly which way he's going to bat till he gets up to home plate. Looks like he's going to bat left-handed again. Terry was called out on strikes in the third inning. Now let's see if Ramos pitches a little close to Terry this time. Terry threw one a little close to... Uh, down to the Elso, the shortstop. And we almost had a little rhubarb out on the mound, but they held Jose back. And then Ramos hit Nadler, and we almost had another one. Tied Boyer at second with one out. Yankees leading 3 nothing in the top of the fifth. Here's the stretch. The pitch is swung at a missed strike one. The 
the outfield playing very shallow on Terry. Cassetti told Boyd to look around and see where they are. The pitch is hit foul outside of third, strike two. It's always a good idea for the base runner to look around and see how the outfield's playing. In the event a line driver's out there, he'll know whether he has a chance to score or not. Nothing in two on route. The pitch is outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Boyer leading off second base. Here's the stretch by Ramos. The pitch, strike three, swinging, and Perry let go of the bat with one hand. Almost lost the bat completely. That's strikeout number five for Ramos. Second time Terry has gone down and strike. Here's Tony Kubek, who singled in the first inning, fly to left in the third. Yankees three, center, there's nothing. Ramos is moving Allison in, in right field. That is in towards the infield. He was playing a little deep. Pitch to Kubek, outside ball one. Tony had a little bit of a rest. He uh, had a bout with the virus. Didn't last too long. He's back in shape. Pitch is a curve outside ball two, two and nothing. down on it. Boy, he is bright now that it's getting dark here. Yeah. Watching the ball game for nothing. Here's the stretch. The 2 nothing pitch is outside ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Peter Spoyer still at second base. Here's the stretch. The 3 nothing pitch. High outside, ball four. And there is the first walk of the ball game for either pitcher. Kubek gets it. Here's Hector Lopez, who sacrificed in the first inning and struck out in the third. Runners at first and second with two out. Ramos signaling to Jim Lennon. Old Pedro's in charge of this ball game, isn't he? He moves his outfielders around, infielders, looks over at Killebrew. Here's the stretch by Ramos. His pitch is a strike call. Pitcher over his left shoulder. He really got a closed stance. One strike pitch is Tom Luck got all man. He sliced one off the end of his bat and it just hit inches below the railing of the box seat to the right of the Senator dugout. And had that ball gone in the seat, nobody could have gotten out of the way of it. Whoever was aimed at it was hit so hard. Those are the tough fouls to move away from when they sliced off the bat. They go over there so fast. Nothing and two on Lopez. Two out, two on. The Yankees lead three nothing on the top of the fifth. Ramos shakes off the sign. Shakes off another one. Now he's got the one he likes. Stretches. The fifth. Hit high in the air. He's just center field. Gardner backing up the second baseman. Wisman in. And Wisman calls for it and makes the catch. He kept yelling, which is the thing for the outfielders to do. Easy for them to make the play coming in. For the Yankees in the top of the fifth. No runs. One hit. No center to Harris. Two men left. The score at the end of four and a half innings, the Yankees three and the Senators nothing.
Senators in the bottom of the fifth. It'll be Billy Gardner, who was hit by a pitch ball in the second inning. Earl Batty and Jose Valdivioso. Ralph Terry has given up just one hit so far in four full innings. The Yankees lead 3 nothing. Terry goes to the rosin bag. Now steps on the rubber to get the sign from Yogi. Then turns around to look at the out there. Here's the first pitch to Gardner. It's a curve that's high, ball one. The one nothing pitch is a strike call. Best ball caught the outside part of the plate. One and one. Boy, and now moves way back at third. Could be a decoy. Letting Gardner think that he's going back. Trying to lay one down. He'll come charging in. 1-1 one, one pitch. Serve hit on the ground. Out to short. Kubek. To Hadley. And it's one away. Brings up Earl Batty, who struck out in the second inning. Terry has six strikeouts to his credit. Six in the first three innings. Two in each of the first three innings. Pitch to Batty is a strike. Terry's hitting that outside corner regularly. The one strike pitch is strike two called. Again out there. Strike pitch. Up foul down the right field line. Hadley gave it a good try and caught it on one hop. Roger Maris had no chance to get it. And Hadley went a long ways down that line and almost caught up to it. Tom Holes had nothing in two on Betty. Senators, nothing. Bottom of the fifth. This is a fastball on the outside corner. Strike three called. Boy, he hit the outside corner three times on Batty. That's the seventh strikeout for Terry. And here's Jose Valdivioso, who struck out swinging in the third inning. is lying to center field. Mantle right there. Hardly has to move. Makes the catch. Ball hit right on the nose. But right at Mickey and the Senators get down one, two, three in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing across. The score at the end of five full innings. The Yankees three and the Senators nothing. Well, the Yankees return home from an extended road trip on Friday night, July 22nd when they face Al Lopez's defending champion Chicago White Sox. They'll be at the stadium on Friday night, July 22nd, and a Ladies' Day game on Saturday, July 23rd, and a big Sunday doubleheader on July 24th. And that should be a great series. On the scoreboard in the American League at the end of two and a half innings, Baltimore three, the Red Sox nothing, Estrada against Brewer. That's the only other American League game scheduled. In the National League, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, nothing, nothing at the end of one, Roberts against Newcomb. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee at the end of one, nothing, nothing, Law against Willie. San Francisco at Los Angeles will start much later on, and in the only day game, the Cardinals defeated the Cubs 3-2, to two. McDaniel the winner, Cardwell the loser, Any Banks had a 24th home in the sixth with one on. Well, Mickey Mantle, who bounced to first and was hit by a pitch ball, will be the batter. and 
throw at this inning. There's a Pearson trio. For any pitcher, that is. Here's a pitch to Mickey. He swings and misses strike one. What a cut. Mickey had it that one. If he'd have hit that one, that would have been a tape measure job. Boy, I haven't seen him swing that hard all year. Wow, he. One strike pitch. High fly to left center. Jim Lemon is moving under it, pounding his glove. Makes the catch and it's one away. That brings up Roger Merritt, who hit a long home run just there, deep over the right field fence in the first inning, and then hit back to the box in the fourth. Merritt's his 26th home of the year. He's got 66 runs about it in. One out, nobody on. to Roger is hit on the ground to Killebrew up with it on one hop races to the bag for the unassisted put out so that's two away and here's Yogi Berra Yogi has twice fly to center field 0 for 2 for Curve inside, ball one. One nothing pitch. There's a curve swung and a missed strike one. That was a low curve ball. Down below the knees. One one on Yogi. On deck, Ken Hadley. One pitch, a strike two. He threw the fastball right by him that time, and that's something you very seldom see. Anybody throw a fastball by Yogi? One ball, two strikes. Here's the windup and the pitch. A fly ball to left field. Lemon going back in front of the wall. He makes the catch. Yogi got good one on it. Up the wrong field. And the Yankees get down one, two, three in the top of the six. Nothing across. The score at the end of five and a half innings of play. The Yankees three and the Senators nothing. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Pedro Ramos will lead off for the Senators and then the top of the batting order. Ramos struck out in the third inning. The Yankees three, the Senators nothing. The Yankees have had only three base hits in the ball game and the Senators won. Starting right-handed against her. Here's Terry's first pitch to Ramos. It's a slight call. Terry has been ahead of all the center of the hitters tonight. He has not walked a man. Out seven. Pitch is right to a swing and a miss. Ball really popped in Yogi's glove. I thought he hit it for a second. Nothing in two. The pitch curve hit slowly foul down the third base line. Picked up by Ellis Clary, the third base coach, puts it to Cletus Boyle, who throws it back to Terry. by Terry. Here's a two-strike pitch. Outside, ball one. The one ball, two-strike pitch. Is strike three swinging. Strikeout number eight for Ralph Terry. The second time Ramos has gone down on strikes. 
And here's Pete Woodenhead, who struck out in the first inning, hit back to the box in the third. That first strike in there. Three nothing. The Yankees lead in the bottom of the sixth. One out. Nobody on. Strike two. A sidearm fastball. Ralph must just be nicking that outside corner. But the batters are all stopping to turn around and look at the umpire. Wizenhead. Here's the windup. The pitch is strike three called, and Wizenhead looking for the curve takes the fastball. And strikeout number nine is chalked up for Terry. And that brings up the only man who has had a base hit off Terry, Reno Vittoria. Vittoria called out on strikes in the first inning and single the left in the fourth. And there was no doubt about that single. It was a line shot. Two out. Pitch to Victoria is low ball one. One nothing pitch. The curve hit on the ground right at Boya. Up with it. Throws to Hadley in time for the out. That ball was hard hit. But Boya, when he gets his glove on that ball, it's gone. And the Senators go down one, two, three in the bottom of the sixth, nothing across the score. At the end of six full innings, the Yankees have three runs on three hits, no errors, and two men left. The Senators have one, uh, one, they have no runs on one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. Man, they are really having a night, those pitches, I'll tell you that. On the scoreboard. And the American League at the end of three innings now, Baltimore three, the Red Sox nothing. Estrada against Brewer, the only other American League scheduled game. No other games in the National League. Philadelphia nothing, Cincinnati nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Roberts against Newcomb. Pittsburgh nothing, Milwaukee nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Law against Willie. San Francisco at Los Angeles starts later on. And the Cardinals beat the Cubs this afternoon, 3-2 at Chicago. McGann in relief to win a card who started the loser. Ernie Banks, home number 24 in the sixth with one on. The Yankees leading three to nothing, and coming over to the radio side now will be Mel Allen right after we pause for station identification. 1460 on the radio dial. This is Quality Modern Radio, WOKO, serving you with the best of everything. 25 minutes before 10. Swings with the high foul down the left field line, out of play. Strike one. Kent Hadley took a third strike in the second inning and went down swinging in the fourth. Three play on deck and Bobby Richardson to follow. Three to nothing, New York in the seventh inning. Pedro Ramos gets the sign from Earl Batty. Swings to the windup. Around comes the right arm. The pitch fastball up high, and the count is one and one. One ball, one strike. The one-one delivery swung on and popped up into the air to the shortstop, Jose Valdivielso. And he makes the catch. One down in the seventh. Cleet Foyer grounded to second and single to right. He's at one for two. Ramos delivers. 
delivers to the right-hand batter who swings and fouls it back. Strike one. Nothing in one. A ball game enlivened this evening by threats and counter-threats and an eventual warning by plate umpire John Flaherty. Uh, pitcher Pedro Ramos for a but in his judgment was an intentional hitting of Mickey Mantle with a pitch in retaliation for an alleged intentional bean uh, toss. Here's the delivery swung on to high fly ball to left. Lemon getting back. And he's going to get under it and makes the catch. Jose de Valley, they also thought that Ralph Terry had thrown close to him deliberately. And Lemon Mantle came up the next inning, his first pitch hit him, and Flaherty went out, so it cost Ramos $50, and uh, if in the judgment of the umpire, he should uh, deliberately hit another Yankee batter, he'd be automatically removed from the game. Bobby Richardson at bat, takes the ball, while possible it isn't uh, probable that that would occur, then the up for the league president to uh, deliver a whatever fine a suspension that he uh, thought advisable. Here's the pitch to Richardson, and it's low outside. Two balls, no strikes. The do-nothing pitch. Bobby swings and sends a fly ball into right center. Bob Allison moves under it, makes the catch, and that retires the tide. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of six and a half innings, New York three, Washington nothing. You know, when it comes to having a favorite team, that's all part of the game. Each person has a preference. And I'm sure that naturally a lot of you people have a preference uh, for the type of glass you like your beer served in. Some folks don't care, some do. I like one of those big ones. I give up. Well, getting away from the fireworks is something that cools you off at crisp refresh. I, I think the kind of glass you use matter is just a personal taste, but what counts is the real taste in the glass. And that's where Valentine comes in. It delivers top taste and refreshment in any glass. A crisp refresher. That golden Valentine is mighty refreshing. And when it comes to flavor, Valentine's the light beer with true lager flavor. It proves a beer can be truly light and still give you all the downright delicious lager beer flavor you want. That's the reason Valentine beer is the crisp refresher. So enjoy the one beer that tastes great anytime in any glass. Enjoy light, delicious Valentine beer with Chris Perfecture. In the last half of the seventh inning, Bob Allison heading third in the order. First up, Jim Lemmer on deck and Harmon Killebrew to follow. New York leading 3 to nothing. Ralph Terry getting ready to pitch. The Washington fans calling for a rally. The wind-up and the pitch to Allison swung on and fouled off to the right of the plate. And the ball is out of play in the upper stand. Nothing in one the count. This ballpark favors uh, a hitter in many respects. One in the matter of uh, the foul territory around home plate isn't very deep. Here's the next pitch. Allison takes it outside for a ball. A lot of balls that are fouled off. This is the first one Allison fouled off, but uh, have been uh, caught by catchers. A lot of ballparks at least did have the chance to get under it. Here's the delivery, and it's outside for ball two. Two and one. Conditions, of course, that equally favor uh, the contenders. With the exception of one factor, that one team uh, plays 77 games here and the other one only 11. 
Here's the pitch. Outside, ball three, three and one. Ralph Terry has fallen behind on Bob Allen. Three balls, one strike. And the crowd senses this uh, shift because Terry has steadily been ahead of the hitters. Staying ahead of them on the count. Three balls, one strike. Allison has had his look at Ellis Clary coaching at third for hitter take time. Terry to the windup and the 3-1 pitch. It's outside ball four and that's the first pass Terry has issued. Allison becomes the second base runner. Bertoglia having single to left in the fourth inning. Uh, uh, Gardner was hit by a pitch ball in the second inning. Uh, the uh, first base runner. So this would be the third base runner the center just had. Jim Lemon flying to left and flying to center. Both times hitting the ball high but not quite deep enough to go into the seat. He has been zeroing in. One on, nobody out. Ralph Terry delivers and the pitch is swung on and missed strike one. An attempt to check the swing by Lemon. Nothing in one. One strike. Allison leading away. Here's the pitch. Good ball over. Strike two. Nothing in two. No balls. Two strikes. Now the pitch. Lemon swings and lines it into center field for a base hit. Allison drops it second. So the Senators have runners on first and second. Nobody out. And Armin Killebrew coming up. Ralph Perry had him no balls, two strikes. Thought to slip the third one by, but he didn't. Now the Senators have the making. Armin Killebrew, the batter, and Billy Gardner on deck. And the Yankee bullpen gets the call. Allison on second. Lemon on first. Nobody out in the last of seven. Three nothing, New York. Here's the pitch to Killebrew. Swung on to high pop. Boyer going into foul ground. And he's got it. Killebrew fouls out to Boyer. Art Dittmar warming up for New York as Billy Gardner comes up. He was hit by a pitch ball and grounded to short. Uh, 
with six for 22. Jim Lemon on second. Bill Gardner on first one out, one run in in the seventh inning. Yankees three, Senators one. Ballo, left hand batter. Ralph Perry to the stretch. Time called by John Flaherty as Perry was ready to throw. He looked back at second and then started a pitch, but time had been called. The stretch runners lead away from first and second. The pitch to Ballo. In there for a strike. Nothing in one. Second, Gardner off first. Ralph Terry delivers, and Ballow swings and turns the drive into the right center. Randall moves over and makes the catch. The throw comes right back into Richardson. Lemon holds it second, and Gardner at first. Ballow lines out the mantle. Now, Cookie Lamagetto recalls Jose Valdi Delso, and we'll have a pinch hitter for him. Possibly Dan Dobek. Julio Becker. It'll be Julio Becker. Julio Becker coming into bat for Jose Valdivielso. Becker batting 241. Becker is uh, not the most difficult man to pitch to uh, over a season playing every day, but he is in, in a situation such as this because he's a wild swinger. And he has good power in this park to the opposite field, the left center, which is the uh, favorite uh, home run area in this ballpark. He can also pull that ball. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit to second. Richardson up with it. Hadley gets over, takes the throw, and the side is retired. Bobby had to wait for Hadley to get over. He had a long way to go because he's playing back deep. And the side is retired. So the Senators finally strike uh, through Ralph Terry for a run. Two hits, no errors, and two men left on. At the end, then, of seven innings of play, the Yankees, three runs, three hits, no errors, and two left on. Washington, one run, three hits, no errors, and four men left on base. Try the light beer with true lager flavor. Enjoy a tall, frosty glass full of Valentine beer with crisp perfection. Get the All Star Game uh, to be played at Yankee Stadium on July the 13th. There will be one in uh, Kansas City on the 11th. Tickets are on sale now for the second of the two All Star Games to be played at the stadium at all of the ticket outlets. The Yankee Stadium advance sale ticket windows open seven days a week, nine to five, even when the Yankees are out of town in the town ticket office. At Grand Central Terminal and the 12 Weber Howe Brothers stores. And you can also order our All Star Game tickets by mail. 840 boxes, 630 reserves. The right to All Yankee, uh, to All Star tickets, Yankee Stadium, the box 51, New York. And then accompany your order. Uh, add 75 cents to the total order for mailing and handling charges. And make sure you have a certified check or order, express order, etc. when you order your all-star game tickets. Now, we have uh, Hal Narragon back of the plate, and he will hit eight. While Billy Consolo goes into play short and will hit seven, just opposite uh, the two positions uh, that were replaced by pinch hitters. 
Murray now comes up to bat in the eighth inning, and just for a change of pace, he's batting right-handed, having struck out twice batting left-handed, which is as good a reason as any. The pitch is low for a ball. I'm not uh, being cynical at, uh, at all, but uh, around kids about it, that is switch around, not doing too well on one side, try another side. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed for a strike. The way uh, Ramos has been pitching, I don't think it's going to matter a lot. If he continues that uh, pace, Pete has been as rough as he can be since that first inning. The 1 1 pitch. A little outside, ball 2, 2 and 1. Ramos gave up two hits in the first inning and one since. Yankees 3, Washington 1, first of the eighth. Now the pitch. It's Low outside, ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike. Cookie Lavigetto comes up off the fence now. Let's take a little closer look. Uh, but I can tell he's looking at John Flaherty or Pete Ramos. Here's the pitch. And it's in there for a strike, full count. Meaning, I don't know whether he's getting on the umpire or watching uh, Ramos a little more closely. Full count on Ralph Terry. And Ramos aims this one in there, and it's over. Call strike three. One away in the eighth inning. Tony Kubek, single to center in the first inning, flied to left in the third and drew a pass in the fifth. He scored in the first inning ahead of Roger Maris, 26 homer. Toya moves in close. The pitch to Kubek is low outside for a ball. But Toya protect, uh, protecting against uh, any front possibility. To describe it properly, you'd say he's playing in there to keep him from running. Here's the pitch, and it's over for a strike. By playing back, you'd uh, invite it. One strike. John Flaherty asks for the ball, looks it over, and puts a new one in play. Ramos is uh, wiping his hands with a handkerchief. They sometimes uh, get on feet in the dugouts, claiming it's, he occasionally throws uh, the spitter. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. Swung on. It's a uh, high pop and a very short left. Lemons under it and makes the catch. Two away. Hector Lopez coming up. Sacrificed in the first inning. Took a third strike in the third and five to center in the fifth. Ramos delivers. Fastball swung on it. Missed. Strike one. He's been strong tonight. Earlier in his career, Pete used to fire away like this, but then he'd run out of gas. Long about seventh, eighth, eighth inning. But he's uh, grown stronger, and he's learned to uh, pace himself a little better. Here's the delivery, and it's inside. Throwing a little more breaking stuff, too. One ball, one strike. While well, his record, uh, 4-9, uh, of course, isn't a good one, yet it belies his true pitching uh, skill. He's lost some real tough games. The 1-1 delivery is inside for a ball, 2-1. count on Hector Lopez. And the pitch. Swung on, bounced the third and one hop. Victoria has it, throws on over to Killebrew, scoops it out of the third on a hop. And Lopez is retired. And 
and so are the Yankees in order. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Now let's see. Four, seven. Ten men in a row retired by Ramos. He's given up just one hit since the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. At the end of seven and a half innings, New York three and Washington one. Next time you drop by your favorite tavern, your favorite and friendly tavern, remember, remember these words. To really refresh you, a beer must offer lightness plus flavor. So make the three ring sign and ask the man for Valentine. The Crisp Refresher. And I'll tell you one thing, you'll get real honest to goodness beer drinking pleasure out of the Crisp Refresher. Because Valentine gives you both lightness and flavor. The light beer with true lager flavor. That's why folks call it the Crisp Refresher. So after the game or any time, ask the man for Valentine. Remember, from Maine to Florida, Valentine's the largest selling beer in the East. We pause for station identification. For the eighth inning, Lenny Green, a left-hand hitter, comes up to bat for Pete Ramos. New York three, Washington one. Ralph Perry, pitching to Green, the left-hand batter picks the ball, a little bit outside, perhaps a little high. Dobbs warming up for Washington. He's a left-hander. Green has had 22 for 99, hitting 222. The pitch in there for a strike fastball. The count is one and one. Pete Prisonen's on deck and Reno Bertoglia to follow. Three to one New York. They pitch to Green. It's in there. Curveball, strike two. One ball, two strikes. Jerry getting a sign from Barry, from Barra. The wind up and the pitch fastball is popped up into the air. Barra making the play on the ball. strike, hit to the box, and took a third strike. Batting 273 as the game began. Reno Portoya on deck. Ralph Perry getting Yogi signed. Hander delivers, swung on and fouled off. Strike one. Ellis Clary uh, walked up and down the white line, inside white line of the coach's box. Boy, it used to be white. He's walked over the white. He really paces. Ralph Perry pitching and Wisenant takes outside for a ball. One and one. I often wonder whether a coach who paces like he does really is aware of walking so much. I doubt if he is. Releasing a nervous energy. Time called by John Flaherty. Wisenant steps out. Strike. Terry 
straight to the windup and the pitch to Wisnant. Swung arm and lofted out into center field for a base hit. Wisnant takes the turn and holds up. He reached for that ball and lofted a soft liner into short center. Wisnant gets aboard. And here's Reno Batoya. He took a third strike, single left, and grounded to third. One for three. Ditmar returns to warming up for New York. Wisnet leads away. Terry pitches. Victoria swings and sends a drive to deep center. Mano going back toward the wall and what? The ball's off the wall. Mano hangs up against the wall. Wisnet scores. Here comes Victoria around second on the third. A triple for Victoria off the center field fence. And it's three to two. Mano banged up against the barrier and shook himself up. Reno Batoya triples off the center field fence. Scoring Wisnet. It's three to two. One out. Batoya collecting his third triple and 19th run batted in. And so the Senators slamming away have now brought Casey Stengel out of the dugout. talking now to Terry and Vera. Casey looking down toward the bullpen. Mantle came close to uh, one-handing that ball as he leaped up against the center field barrier, but he slammed into the fence and seemed to uh, hurt himself. Uh, he bounced off it anyway. The ball bounced off too. Casey's letting uh, Terry stay with it. And the batter now is Bob Allison. Out on a front in the first inning to the pitcher. He bounced to the box in the fourth inning and walked in the seventh. So it is three to two. With Consolo on third. Or rather, uh, Bertoglio on third. One out, the infield in. The pitch to Allison. Swung on, a fly ball down the right field line, going foul, out of play. Strike one. And Allison takes it outside for a ball. One and one. One ball, one strike. Bartoya up the line, short ways. The wind up. Here's the pitch. Allison takes outside. Ball two. Two and one. One count on the right fielder. Jim Coates has joined Dittmar in warming up. Senators coming from behind, three to nothing, to three to one, and now to three to two. The runner on 
third and one out for Choi on third. A two-one count on Bob Allison. The infield in. Ralph Terry to the windup. The pitch to Allison. Swung on, grounded to Richardson. He holds a runner at third. Flips to Hadley, and they're two away. And here's Jim Lerman coming up. Allison seemed to want to check his swing on that ball. And grounded to Richardson with the infield drawn in. So with two away, here's Jim Lemon with Harmon Killebrew on deck. Lemon flying to left, to center, and single to center. Big Jim. Senator's big gun. Right hand hitter batting 282. Infield back at normal depth. Outfield back as far as the fences will allow. The pitch to Lemon. High ball one. The fastball. Victoria moves off the bag. Ralph Terry getting set. Into the windup, here's the pitch to Lemon. Swung on, a ground ball hits the third. And with it is for you, the throw over to first in time, and the side retired. One run for Washington. Two hits. No Yankee errors, and the big runner left on third. And at the end of eight innings, the Yankees, three runs, three hits. No errors, two left on. The Senators, two runs, five hits, no errors, and five men left on base. WOKO, Albany. But I'm not looking for it. The struggle to hold on to what we got. In the American League, Baltimore, eight, Boston, nothing, at the end of four and a half innings. I mean, just to give you an idea. Chuck Estrada pitching for Baltimore. Tom Brewer started for Boston. Wills came on in the fourth. That's the only other struggle scheduled in the American League. In the National League, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, scoreless at the end of four innings. Roberts and Newcomb, the pitchers. Pittsburgh and Milwaukee, scoreless at the end of three and a half innings. Law and Willie. This afternoon, the Cardinals nip the Cubs 3-2 to two, and McDaniel in relief of Simmons in the seventh inning of the winner. Cardwell, who started the loser. Schaffernoff relieved in the ninth. Ernie Banks at his 24th homer in the sixth inning with one on. Giants and Dodgers playing tonight. Coast time. I had a pencil here a moment ago. Did it roll off? Stops is coming in. Is this the one I had? I wonder what happened to it. Thank you, Howard. Pete Ramos worked uh, eight great innings. In the first inning, Kubek single and then Maris homered. Since that time, one hit. Mantle, who will lead off here in the ninth, was hit by a pitch ball and advanced three bases on an infield out, a fly ball, and a pass ball. The paid attendance tonight is 20,139. Ramos allowed three hits, walked one, and struck out uh, six. Mickey Mantle batting right-handed. Grounded to first, hit by pitch ball, five to left, batting left-handed against Ramos. Chuck stops. End of the wind-up, round comes left arm, the pitch swung on and missed, strike one. Stops in his 17th appearance has won five and lost two. The left-hander delivers, and Mantle takes a fastball high. Chuck has uh, made a fine comeback. Senators actually let, uh, let him go to the Cardinals, who in turn let him go, and the Senators signed him up again. He's done very well. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. One and two. Chuck 
started out with the Red Sox, you'll remember. A one-two count. Ninth inning, Yankees three, Senators two. Stobbs goes to the windup. Here's the pitch, and Mantle takes ball two, two-two, fastball. The 2-2 pitch swung on and popped up. Out back of second is uh, the shortstop, Consolo, and he makes the catch. One away. And now the batter is Roger Maris. Maris did a two-run homer in the first inning, his 26th of the year. Hit to the box and grounded to first. to New York in the ninth inning. Stobbs into the windup and the pitch. Over, strike one, fastball. Chuck is quite a fine example of the adage in baseball that one should never give up too early on a pitcher. A lot of fellows who learn how to pitch late in their competitive lives. The pitch swung on, a foul ball drilled down the right field line upon the roof and out of the park. That had the fans buzzing, but the ball, uh, while hard hit, was fouled from uh, the moment it went no past first base at most. I mean, it just it disturbed uh, up on top of the roof. There's no chance of being fair anywhere near that. The two-strike pitch. Cook out. Did he get hit by that? He did. And he's on. And now Cookie Lavagetto comes up off the bench. Maris is nicked by a pitch ball. And found it out of the middle of Maragon. Sometimes it's difficult to determine whether it nipped the batter or tipped the bat, and the ball bounced out of the mid as well, so you couldn't tell the foul tip or not. Cookie Lavagetto uh, has uh, a few words to say on the matter of his own personal judgment. Duke Moss gets up in the Yankee bullpen. Right now, Maris leads off first. Barra is at bat. The pitch to Yogi. High outside for a ball. And Shirley is going too, but I think they're just, they're not they're warming up to come in the game. Uh, I guess on my point only. Earlier it was uh, Dittmar and Coates. Stobbs to the stretch. Check of the runner, Maris. And the pitch to Barra is high for a ball. Two and nothing. Yankees three, Senators two in the ninth inning. In the last of the ninth, Harmon Killebrew is the first Senator batter with Gardner and Consolo scheduled to follow. Stops to the stretch. Maris with a good lead. There's a move over there and he's back. I was looking for that uh, move over there, weren't you, Patty? We were uh, sort of on an angle between the pitch and the first baseman. You can see Maris come way off. And the delivery. It's in there for a strike. Two and one. You know, a lot of folks on both sides don't believe what an umpire has to say a lot of times. Here's the pitch. Swung on and popped up into there and short left. Lemon coming in. Jim Lemon makes the catch. Maris retreats to first. Two down. 
And Bill Scowron is coming up to bat for Kent Hadley. Scowron batting for Hadley. wrist, which he injured in Detroit, sliding into second in an effort to make a double play. I was uh, not re-injured, but kind of weakened after the double header the other day. Here's the pitch. He swings and lifts a high fly ball into right field. Bob Allison is under it, waiting, and he's got it. Matthias retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. So the Yankees over the last eight innings have been limited to one hit, getting two in the first inning. At the end of eight and a half innings, New York three, Washington two. You know, there's a certain amount of unrehearsed humor that occurs in all sports from time to time. I take these nuggets on the lighter side. A loyal San Francisco 49er fan while visiting in New York phoned the West Coast radio station, asked the announcer to leave the telephone next to the speaker. Heard the football game and wound up with a $45 telephone bill. That's a real football buff, huh? And then a marathon swimmer in Mexico suddenly quit a 26-mile race. The explanation? He swallowed a jellyfish. <laughs> They've been doing that at Harvard for a long while. And finally, a doctor playing outfield for a semi-pro team ended up with two hits in a game, even though he took time out to treat an ailing spectator and deliver two babies. Never did find out where they were twins. Well, anyway, let's head over to the lighter side of beer. Valentine beer. You know, every glass of Valentine tells you it's the light beer with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. So next time, make a beeline for Valentine. Enjoy an ice cold fastball. The last half of the ninth inning. Yankees three, Senators two. Carmen Killebrew at bat, struck out, fly to center, and fouled out the third. Ralph Terry doing the pitching. Held the Senators to one hit for the first six innings, but gave up two hits in each of the last two. Killebrew, he's swinging for the equalizer, of course. Ralph Terry to the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on, little tap slowly to third. And they throw over to first base. In time to get him just by half a step. A nice play by Cleet Boyer, who had to, uh, at the last fraction of the second, decide whether to pick the ball up and throw it or gamble that it might roll foul. Because he was close to the line, and he had to utilize his good arm to get Killebrew. Ed Hurley had moved over into position and was right on top of the play. Here's Billy Gardner. Hit by a pitch ball, grounded to short, and singled to left. He hit the first pitch for a single in the seventh inning to drive in a run. Hit it between third and short. Ralph Terry into the windup and the pitch over the outside corner for a strike. Nothing in one. Faye Throneberry comes out on deck. He'll bat for Consolo. Ralph Terry delivers to Billy Gardner. He swings and lines it into left field for a base hit. Hector Lopez up for the ball. Throws in second. Gardner's trying to go for two, and he goes for two. He stretches it into a double. Hector Lopez fielded the ball, but Gardner turning first, gambled and made it with two bases. Kubek... Uh, took the throw. It could have gone on to Richardson, but Tony didn't realize that he was coming in, and I doubt the throw would have had him anyway. And so Billy Gardner doubles with one out in the ninth inning, and Faye Thornberry comes up to hit for Consolo. And Casey is coming out of the dugout, and that'll be all for Ralph Terry. Casey, second time out. Has been warming up and uh, Charlie. 
Coach and Dittmar were warming up before. Could be Curly or, or uh, Mars now. It'll be Bob Curly coming on. Hank Thor whistled twice, you know, the kind of whistle where you put your fingers in your mouth. And then he indicated the man he wanted by signaling the size of the shoulders, which is a typical signal to given by a fellow who played football. And by word, by association, psychologically, that'd be the kind of signal. He'd yeah. bigger shoulders than uh, Duke Moss. Bob Turley coming in. Thronberry will be batting for Consolo. Billy Gardner stretched his single into a double. A daring maneuver that could pay off for Washington here. It certainly is a turning point. Charlie coming in for his 16th appearance. Started against the Tigers July 3rd, went six innings. As a record of five and one. Ralph Perry, who will uh, depart, cannot lose the game, but it could be that he cannot win it. Ralph Perry leaves after eight and a third innings. Ralph pitched uh, six, a great inning. He gave up one hit and struck out nine in the first six innings. But then the Senators began to get to him in the seventh and the eighth. And so far uh, in the ninth, after getting one man out, he gave up the double to Gardner. So Ralph allowed altogether six hits. One in the first six innings, two in the seventh, two in the eighth, and one in the ninth. Walked one, struck out nine. Has been charged with two runs, is responsible for Billy Gardner. Faith Thronberry will be batting for Consolo, and on deck is Hal Maragon, two left-handed batters. And Bob Curley comes in to try and protect the one-run lead. Bobby Richardson at the mound talking to Curley. Now we're set to continue. Ray Thronberry. Batting for Billy Consolo. Hitting 243 on the season. Bob Curley into the stretch. Billy Gardner leads off second. And the pitch to Thronberry. Swung on lines at the center for a base hit. Gardner comes around third to score the tying run. Ray Thornberry lines the first pitch to center for a base hit. And the ball game is tied up at 3-3. The Senators have been going on the pressure. Have scored one run in the seventh, the eighth, and one so far here in the ninth. And Art Dittmar gets up to warm up again. But you'll have a general is just signal to the bullpen for a base runner, I believe. We have a base runner for Thronberry. Hernandez running for Thronberry. A recent uh, pitching acquisition of the Senators running for Thornberry, and Al Maragon is the batter. Maragon batting 193. Bob Curley to the stretch, and the pitch inside for a ball. Ralph Curley is no longer involved in the ball game. 
far as the uh, decision is concerned. He was charged with three runs. One out. Hernandez on first. Surely ready. And the pitch is hit to first. Moose steps on first. Moose to second for the tag and a double play. And we go to extra innings. There's a hard shot. Darren made a beautiful play on the low liner. Picked it up, stepped on first for uh, the first out. Threw on the two bags who tagged out Hernandez for the double play. One run for Washington. Two hits. No Yankee errors and no one left on. And at the end of nine innings, it's three to three. And so the base running of Billy Gardner, as we uh, recall to you, stretching his finger into a double proved to be the turning point. And as we go to the tenth inning, Armin Killebrew switches over to third. Thronberry, or not Thronberry, but... Uh, Check here. Who we got at first base? Allison's at first base, and Killebrew's at third. Gardner's at short, and Bertoya is at second. And Stobbs is pitching. And we'll look now at the scoreboard. Baltimore, eight. Boston, two, ten to five innings. Estrada for Baltimore. Brewer relayed by Wells in the fourth for Boston. And in the National League, Philadelphia, Cincinnati, scoreless under four and a half, Roberts and Newcomb. Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, scoreless under five, Law and Willie. Card beat the Cubs three to two. McDaniel, the winner, relayed for Simmons. Cardwell, the loser. Banks at his 24th with one on. Giants and Dodgers, now later start. We'll give you the other lineup change in a moment. Right now, Fleet Boyer's up. First of the tenth, three three. The delivery swung on and popped up into the air to Allison playing first base. He makes the catch. One away. Fleet Foyer, who grounded to second, single to right and fly to left, pops out to Bob Allison, now playing first base, in place of Killebrew, who moved from first to third, in place of Victoria, who moved to second, in place of Gardner, who moved to short, in place of Consolo. And Bobby Richardson up now bumps that the ball and misses for a strike. Stan Gobeck is in right field in place of Allison. No balls, one strike. Stobbs delivers, swung on, and fouled back out of play. A two strike count on Bobby Richardson. Dittmar continues to warm up. No balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Swung on, hit to the box. Stops, throws over to Allison, and there are two away. Two up and two down. Bob Turley is due to bat. Serves at the bat rack. Serve will hit for Turley. Billy Gardner at the mound talking to Stobbs. Bob Serve coming up now to bat for Turley. Dittmar will be coming on to pitch in the last of the tenth. Bob Serve, hitting 253. He'll be swinging for the fence. Stobbs into the windup and the pitch. In there for a strike, nothing in one. Strike pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Barragon goes back toward the stands and the ball's out of play. Two strikes to count. 
Chuck Stobbs came in to work the ninth inning after Ramos, who had limited the Yankees to three hits, had been removed for a pinch hitter in the last of the eighth. Two men out and two strikes on serve. Stobbs to the wind up, the pitch. High ball one, one and two. Ricky Lambigero swinging his ball club around here in the uh, 10th inning. Now the one-two pitch to serve. Swung on and fouled back out of play. Throw the right fielder into first base. The first baseman to third base. The third baseman to second base. And the second baseman to shortstop. Which created the vacancy in right field, and he filled that in with an outfielder. The one-two delivery and serve swings to foul tip and dropped by an Aragon. Count remains one and two. This crowd of 20,139 thoroughly enjoying the evening, which has been uh, an exciting one. Some great Washington pitching, and for. Uh, Six innings, some great uh, Yankee pitching. The one-two pitch, high ball two. The proceedings enlivened by a few threats and bean ball situations uh, stemming from uh, alleged bean ball situations. The wind up and the two-two pitch to Bob Serve, swung on, say fly ball to right field. Dan Goback moving under it. And he has it, and the side's retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. And now for nine innings, the Yankees have had one hit. They had two hits in the first inning. They had one in the fourth. So that they have actually gone now six innings without a base hit. And uh, Art Dittmar is coming in from the bullpen. And at the end of nine and a half innings of play, the score, the Yankees three... And the Senators, three. In the first inning, the Yankees got two of their hits. A single by Kubek and a homer by Maris. WOKO, Albany, 1460 on the radio dial. While the Senators came on after Terry pitched... Six innings himself of one hit ball, striking out nine, giving up uh, one hit, or rather one run and two hits in each of the seventh and eighth innings. And then the Senators in the ninth they got two hits and another run, the uh, second hit coming off Bob Curley, who had relieved Terry. So it's 3 3 as we play in the last of the tenth. No matter what inning it is, though, we have to uh, get our innings in for Valentine. And we hope you will enjoy some right now. Valentine gives you both lightness and flavor. The two things a beer must have to refresh. It's the light beer with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. So treat your thirst to the crisp refresher. Just make the famous three ring sign and ask the man for a tall frosty glass of Valentine. Valentine beer. We pause for station identification. Quality Modern Radio in Albany, WOKO, serving you with the best of everything. 22 minutes before 11. Art Dittmar coming in to pitch for New York. And Chuck Stobbs is the batter. Pretty good hitting pitcher. 3-3, three, three. it's the last of the tenth. Dittmar's delivery, Stobbs swings and lifts a fly ball into right center. Maris moves over, getting under it and makes the catch. Dittmar making his 17th of thirds, has a record of 7-3. and three. Stobbs gave the ball a pretty good ride into right center. Here's Pete Wisenant with Reno Pretoria coming up. is at one for four. The last of the tenth inning. 
Here's the pitch. It's in there for a strike. Dittmar couldn't get the sign. Ours in the yogi. Now he has it. Here's the pitch. Wisdom and swings and lifts a high pop up, which Bobby Richardson is playing. Waiting, makes the catch. They're two down in the last attempt, and here's Reno Bertoya, who tripled in the eighth inning to drive in a run. He took a third strike, single to left, down to the third, and then tripled. He has been hitting the ball real well. Last week, he traveled at a better than 400 pace, hitting 319 on the season going into the game. Dittmar's pitch, low outside, ball one. No strikes. Here's the delivery. Swung on and fouled back. And the ball is out of play. A 1-1 one, one count on Bertoia. Senators beat the Yankees in the ninth inning yesterday. Came close to it in the ninth inning tonight and have the chance in the tenth inning at the moment. One ball, one strike. Dittmar delivers and Bertoglia takes it low for a ball. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Three, three the score. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Victoria swings and fouls it back. 2-2. Two, two. Dittmark wraps up the cover of the new one. Two strikes. Dittmar delivers and Bertoglia swings and loops one out over second in the center for a base hit on a half swing. Mantle comes up the ball, tossing it in. Bertoglia singles to center and here's Bob Allison. Allison out on a bunt for the pitch in the first inning. Hit to the box in the fourth, walked in the seventh and grounded out in the eighth. To Richardson at second. Dittmar delivers and Allison swings the line to deep to the center field. It is going, going, it is down, and the ball game is over. Bob Allison breaks it up for the home run. In the left center field stand. Kukula Vigeno leads the group out to uh, meet him and greet him. Allison's 10th homer and 41 runs batted in. Two runs for the Senators, two hits, no errors, and no one left on. And so, in an exciting ball game, Washington sweeps the series with the Yankees. Winning the, the second game by a score of five to three. With Art Dittmar, the losing pitcher. And the winning pitcher is Chuck Stobbs. Well, that winds up another Valentine baseball broadcast. And now this is Bob Delaney saying that's all for now from the Atlantic Refining Company and your friendly Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial gasoline to keep your car on the go. And P. Valentine and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher, Valentine Beer, the largest selling beer in the East.